Hey guys, happy Tuesday night. Welcome to the Hot Mess Mom Vlog. This is episode 19. So tonight I'm going to talk about something a little bit different. I'm going to talk about um, my other life, my career as a social worker, and how um, going through tragedy, tragedy and trauma can um, affect your work in the helping profession. So I have been a social worker for the past nine years, um, yeah, nine years or so, um, I graduated with my bachelor's degree from UW-Whitewater in 2009 and graduated with my master's in social work um, from Loyola University in 2010. So um, I have a bachelor's, I have a master's, I'm a certified social worker. Um, I've worked in numerous different fields. I've worked in the child protection field. I've worked with mentally ill veterans in a residential setting. I've worked in homeless shelters. Um, and for the past almost two years now, I've been working in guardianship. So working with adults that are deemed incompetent by the court. I work for a nonprofit in Milwaukee. And for about 10 months, I was a representative, meaning that I... I had a caseload of 50 clients, and I would be the representative of their as their guardian. So I would help make medical decisions, find them placements, um, if they need clothing, things of that nature. I would get that for them. So basically, um, adults that are even competent by either mental health, degenerative brain disorder, developmental disability, um, people that cannot make their own decisions for themselves and don't have family that's appropriate to make those decisions. I done that as a representative for about 10 months, and then I have been a um, guardianship supervisor for about 10 months. I worked for the same company, um, actually came back after being home with my daughter for 18 months, and the only position open at my old company was a supervisor, so I applied and I got the job. Um, but coming back to social work after those 18 months was hard. And for those of you that have been following me for a while, maybe those of you that don't know, I did lose a child in uh, November of 2015. It was Alexandra, my daughter, my two-year-old daughter. It was her twin sister, Victoria. When Victoria was five days old, she had a cardiac arrest. Her heart stopped working. And um, unfortunately, we were not taught CPR for infants. So we were unable to resuscitate her ourselves. We called 911, but she had been out um, far too long. Uh, she was resuscitated. She was brought to Children's Hospital um, from our local hospital where she stayed at Children's Hospital for a week. Um, at that point, they had determined that her brain stem was dead. She hadn't tried to breathe on her own. There were no brain waves. She just was gone. And that was because she had been out for so long. Her heart had stopped for so long. So obviously, um, something like that is going to not only affect you personally, but it's going to affect um, your career. Um, I don't know if it was luckily for me or unlucky for me, but uh, when I needed an extended maternity leave after my pregnancy with twins, um, the HR company, HR at my company wouldn't approve it. I had not been there a year. I did not qualify for Family Medical Leave Act yet. So basically they could not approve an eight to 10 week maternity leave just because of the nature of my job. So I was let go and obviously told that I could come apply again and come back. Um, but that's just a formality of what they had to do. So I, at that time I had planned on staying home at least for a little while with the twins just because you know, daycare is expensive. And I had built my coaching business up to a point where I was able to stay home. Um, I was making double what I was making as a social worker with my business. So obviously being okay with not going back was pretty normal. But I mean, you don't think that tragedy is going to happen. You don't think that your five-year-old child is going to have a heart attack. Um, you don't think um, her brain stem is going to die and she's not going to be in her body anymore. And you're going to have to make that decision to turn off the machines or leave her on the machines basically in a vegetative state for maybe a few years and then she would just pass. Um, we didn't want to bring that sadness into our house. We didn't want her to suffer because she wasn't even really there. Um, she would never open her eyes. She would never hug us. She would never touch us. She would never know we're there. 
So the dog just came downstairs. So hold on. Let's go. That girl right here. So, um, you never think that's going to happen. So, um, blessing in disguise, being able to stay home with Alex for 18, for the first 18 months of her life before I had to go back to work. Um, but there was a time when I had to go back to work because the death of, um, my daughter affected me so negatively that it did affect my business. Um, I didn't have the passion for the business anymore. I'm just being honest with you guys. I've always promised that I would be 100% open and honest with you guys. And after losing my daughter, I just lost the passion for my business. Um, I will be forever grateful to coaching. And obviously, uh, my passion has been rejuvenated. I've come back to the business and I'm working it um, full force on a part-time basis, obviously, because I am working. Um those student loans from that private college are a little overwhelming. So that's something where um, it was decided that I would go back to work as a social worker until those loans were paid off, until we were debt free. So that is the big, hairy, scary goal we have is to rebuild this business back up to a point where we can pay off all our student loans, um, all of our debts, but our house, which we don't have a whole ton. We have student loans and car loans. And that is, and we have, a, obviously we have medical bills just because we have medically needy children. So we're always going to medical bills. But the goal is to get this business rebuilt up to a point where I can stay home. Not because I hate my job, because I love, I love my job. I love being a social worker. Um, now that I finally found a feel that is a good fit for me, um, it's something that I don't hate going to every single day. And, and that's a huge plus. Plus, um, Yes, this company had let me go, but they rehired me and they're fantastic to me. And I love my boss and I love my coworkers and it is just a fantastic place to work. But working with adults that are incompetent, there are lots of adults that are of the older age or have cancer or have other medical issues. And there are times when things will happen with clients because this is not just speaking of my 15 personal clients. This is speaking of all 450 clients in our department at our agency um, is that I'm often involved in end of life conversations. So when someone is in a coma, when should we turn off the machine? Um, should someone be have a do not resuscitate order? These are all things that will flash me back to that time in 2015 where we did have to make that choice to turn off the machine on our own child. So I think it gives me a different um, perspective on that decision. And I think I become much more of an advocate of if they have family, making sure that decision is discussed with family. So, you know, if you've been through tragedy and trauma, that doesn't mean that you can't be a social worker, a nurse, work in the helping field. You absolutely can because you can have empathy for those families, for those clients, for those patients, um, for wards, whoever, whatever population of people you work with, you can have more empathy for the actual individual, their families, their friends, and things of that nature if you've been through trauma and tragedy. Um, so yes, yeah, some days are rough. <laughs> Um, in the past, when my job was rough, I um, turned to alcohol um, desserts, things like that to feel better about what situation I'm going through. Um, I have flipped the switch, so to speak, um, after returning back full force to the coaching, um, world, I've, I've really flipped the switch and, um, I don't use alcohol and food <laughs> to help those emotions. I use exercise, I use talking to my husband, I talking to you guys, talking on social media, talking to my family. That is how I let out those emotions. Um, listen to music super loud in the car and sing badly on my way home. Those are things that, um, and also 
really having a boss that I can be open and honest with and say, I'm having a hard time with this personally. Can we talk this through? So having people and my coworkers obviously understand because they all know what I have been through. Um, so they are understanding of um, where I'm coming from. And when it is a situation that reminds me of my daughter, which has happened, I think, three times in the 10 months I've been back. There's been about three incidences that really reminded me of um, when we lost our daughter. Um, it's just something that I just talk it through. Talk it through. I know my husband doesn't want to talk about it. He does because he knows that I need that. Um, so if you are working in the helping profession, helping field, and you've been through something traumatic, um, a tragedy that really reminds you, that your work reminds you of, um, you just got to make sure you have a support person. Again, be it a spouse, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a family members, friends, co-workers, you just have to be able to talk to somebody about it. You have to have an outlet um, for your emotions. Doesn't necessarily have to be fitness for you. Maybe it can be taking the dog for a walk. Maybe it can be um, drawing a bubble bath, getting a massage. I mean, whatever is going to help you relieve stress. Because for me, um, getting back to workouts every day has kept me from being depressed. It gets me up in the morning where I used, I for the first year um, after losing Victoria, I really, really suffered with depression bad, meaning um, barely be able to get out of bed. And so my first year uh, after her death, it was really hard, obviously, to work at this business, which I didn't really do a whole lot of. Sure, I was kind of sort of working out, but that was to try to keep myself moving, try to keep myself going, giving myself something to do. Um, it wasn't really to lose weight. Sure, I did lose some weight, but um, the majority of the 35 pounds I've lost since the twins were born um, have been in, in the past year um, of these two years. So just really, if you've been through something that's traumatic, especially if it's something your work will remind you of, just make sure you're taking care of yourself. Make sure you're talking to people. Make sure you're doing stuff for you. Um, or else you're going to burn out and you're going to hate what you're doing. So that's all I have for you guys tonight is a pretty short one. Um, but if you have any questions and if what I've said really speaks to you and you're really connecting with what I'm saying, let's chat, let's talk. I love connecting with other moms who've lost children because you guys, I, I've been there. I know, um, I've been through lots of different traumas and tragedies. So um, if you need someone to talk to, I'm here. So I hope everybody has a fantastic Tuesday night and I would say I'll see you next week, but I will probably see you before next week. So have a good night guys. Bye.